and hello everyone welcome to or welcome back to the channel inshallah you are all doing well over the last few months i have been watching several videos that talk about leveling up or glowing up or becoming that woman specifically for women of a certain age and i would say this age is being over 40. as a woman over 40 i really enjoyed those videos and today i wanted to put my own two cents into the conversation or put my perspective on what it, what it means to elevate yourself after a certain age. You know, as a healthcare provider, uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm a, I'm a licensed pharmacist in the United States. And a lot of my videos as of late have been talking to women of my age who are experiencing perimenopause or who are trying to recomp their bodies or who are really just trying to do things a little differently as they age so that once they turn 50, 60, 70, they know that they put in the hard work to reach longevity, to reach a healthy mind, a healthy body. And so in today's video, I wanted to talk about how we can elevate ourselves, including many different phases. So what I hope to do in this series is a series of six phases, which I'll hope, hope to break down into three videos. And in today's video, I'm going to talk about phases one and two. So bear with me as I get through it. These phases don't have to be necessarily in the order that I'm providing, with the exception, I would say, of phase number one. But before we dive in, let me give you the definition of what it is to elevate yourself. To elevate yourself means to improve your personal, professional, or emotional well-being. It involves striving for growth, setting higher goals, setting higher standards, and making positive changes to become a better version of yourself. This is about you. So phase one is all about your intention. We as women need to get into the right mindset. We need to ask ourselves, number one, what is our intention? What is the change we seek and how are we going to get there? We need to understand first and foremost why we are doing something. Why do you want to change? Ask yourself, is this a change for you? Is this a change for somebody else? Is this a change you seek in response to perhaps what somebody said or did or how they treated you, whether it was good or bad? Or are you finally coming to the reality that, you know, you barely, you really need to change and become better for yourself? And something I would add on top of that is, have you tried to change this particular matter? Or have you tried to change in the past? Did it work? Did it fail? What were you trying to do? And how did you go about trying to do it? If you tried and failed, what would you do differently? And what do you need to change? What do you realistically need in your life to change? Is it accountability? Is it some research? Is it a coach? Is it some books? What is it that you need to make a difference this time around? Do you think you can change also if you're willing to modify what you've done in the past? Perhaps you've done something and it hasn't been working. And another important question I need to ask you as you set your intentions is, if this change takes you one year, two years, three years, four or five, if this change takes you a certain amount of years, are you going to be able to adapt and stick with this change? For example, a lot of weight loss journeys for some women take longer than others. Some women see changes in six months. Some, it takes a while. It takes a while because of maybe metabolism or health issues or life circumstances to actually see the changes they want. But consistency is very important in many of these journeys. It could be education, it could be fitness as I just mentioned. So it's gonna be really important that as you set your intentions, make sure you're on your right track. Do it for you, not for somebody else. Even if you're thinking about how you might be able to feel around somebody else, make sure you're putting yourself as the primary point of contact for these changes that you want to make. We can't set intentions for everybody else. It's going to be important to find your truth and set your truth. This might change over the course of time. Your intentions might change and as long as they are good for you and they are good intentions, and I can't define good intentions for everybody, but if your intentions are set in the manner that it's going to be best for you and good for your life and not harming you or harming anybody else, I would say keep at it. Keep going. Don't look at things that might set you back or the hardships or the struggles and give up. It's going to be really important that as you set your intentions to make sure you're doing the best that you can. 
Chime in below what you think about setting intentions. Now, I'm going to jump into phase two. Now, bear with me. Some of you might think this phase comes later down the road, but honestly, I think this phase is gonna be really important. And I want you to think internal versus external from a physical standpoint. On my channel, I talk about health and wellness, and I've been trying to bring many of you along with me on my health journey, my physical fitness journey, as I'm trying to get into the gym more and learn how to take care of myself better and learn how to uh, maintain uh, bone density and or build bone density, maintain and build muscle mass, as well as work on you know heart health and getting in that physical exercise that's gonna be good for the overall body, including the brain and getting the blood flow circulating and stepping off all those diseases that impact us as you know, African and African-American women. Now, what I will say with the physical aspect and how I incorporated this as phase two is, I want us to think internal first. Not the overall appearance of our body, but what's going on inside of our bodies. And for this phase, I'm going to encourage every single woman out there especially if you've reached a certain age and are at a certain state and place in your life to go ahead and get some blood work done. You might be thinking, blood work? Why do I need blood work? You need blood work because the blood reveals a lot. And there are things that are internally that are going on that we may not understand or know unless we get some blood work done. So here are some basic tests that need to be done. Most of these need to be done annually and let me dive into what they are. So let's talk the general health screening. So the general health screening includes a complete blood count or a CBC and this evaluates the overall health and detects a variety of disorders such as anemia, infections, and many other diseases. You also have a basic metabolic panel or a comprehensive metabolic panel. This assesses metabolism including kidney function, blood sugar levels, and electrolyte and fluid balance. Next on the list, let's talk about heart health. A lipid panel is gonna be really important for us. The reason is it helps measure cholesterol levels, including the total cholesterol, the LDL, which is bad cholesterol, the HDL, which is good cholesterol, and triglycerides. The last time I got my blood work done was a few months ago, and total cholesterol was very high, which meant my LDL and my HDL was high. Now, there are certain things you're going to want to do if these levels are high. Your physician or your nurse might give you some recommendations on what you can do and they might prescribe some medications, but they also might tell you to start with physical activity. They might tell you that these are things you need to do in order to get these levels normal and lowered. What's important to know is that a lot of these levels and issues that arise it's very hard to detect. You might be feeling fine, you might be feeling great, but then all of a sudden you get these levels back and it might, it might give you a reality check that, okay, there may be some things you need to do with regards to your nutrition or your physical fitness that's going to then dictate how you're going to set your goals. And again, you might feel fine, you might feel great, you might not know that something is off with your levels, but that's why I encourage you to go ahead and get these tests done so that you can get a baseline. You know where you're starting from in order to set your goals and to move forward. Next on the list is a diabetes screening. Now this is going to be hopefully included as a part of your CBC. And it's important to get your diabetes screening, especially if, again, if you are a person of color because this particular disease state impacts people of color more. And I'll get into some of the statistics in a few minutes. But understand that Hemoglobin A1C measures the average blood sugar levels over the past two to three months to screen for diabetes or prediabetes. Fasting blood glucose measures blood sugar levels after fasting to detect diabetes or prediabetes. According to the U.S. Department of Health and Human Services, Offices of Minority Health, diabetes affects the African American population at disproportionate rates. In 2019, non-Hispanic Blacks were twice as likely as non-Hispanic Whites to die from diabetes. In 2018, African American adults were 60% more likely than non-Hispanic White adults to be diagnosed with diabetes by a physician. In 2019, non-Hispanic Blacks were two and a half times likely to be hospitalized with diabetes and associated long-term complications than non-Hispanic Whites. And in 2019, non-Hispanic Blacks were three 
0.2 times more likely to be diagnosed with end-stage renal disease as compared to non-Hispanic whites. So there is a correlation here with having diabetes and then having complications down the line or pre-diabetes, diabetes and having some complications down the line. This is known and this is seen with cases of patients with pre-diabetes and di that eventually turns into diabetes, that eventually turns into something else. So it's going to be important for you to know your levels. And once again, pre-diabetes, diabetes is silent. If you don't know your levels, you may not know that you are at risk. I think part of elevating yourself is knowing what's going on inside. And I've said this before and I can say it over and over and over again. Please be sure to understand how you're going to level set yourself. If you want to glow up, if you want to level up, if you want to elevate yourself, you want to become a better version of yourself, it starts with you and it starts with some really baseline and basic things that are going on internally. Understand what's going on internally. Okay, moving on, we're going to talk about bone health. Vitamin D levels are important to understand because it ensures you have adequate levels for bone health, immune function, and overall health as well as calcium levels, which are important for bone health and muscle function. We also talk about nutrition. So nutrition, specifically iron levels. Iron and ferritin, this checks for iron deficiency and overload. And then we also have vitamin B12 and folate levels, which is important for red blood cell production and neurological function. Let's talk about liver and kidney function. Liver function tests or LFTs, they assess your liver health and function as well as kidney function tests. They test for creatinine levels, blood urea, nitrogen. It evaluates kidney health and kidney function. Now let's talk about common STD tests. Now getting common STD tests is generally the case if you are pregnant or have been with multiple partners or are with someone who has multiple partners. Some of these tests include HIV, chlamydia, gonorrhea, syphilis, herpes, hepatitis B and C. Why is this important? These things are important because it's your body and it's crucial to understand your health status. Knowing where you stand can reveal underlying issues that might explain why you aren't feeling well or are struggling to improve. So I hope that on your journey to elevating yourself, you will consider setting your intentions, as I mentioned in phase one, and getting some blood work done, as I mentioned in phase two. Elevating ourselves and improving ourselves as women over 40 does include things like pampering ourselves, setting up our environment to be luxurious and, and great and wonderful. It also involves us understanding what's going on internally that may may or may not be harming us. So getting that blood work done is going to be crucial for you to understand where you are and level set yourself. It's a part of your elevation journey, knowing where you are health-wise so that you can comprehend what's going on and then set yourself up for improvements and, you know, longevity and good health. So as I move on in this series and I'm going to talk about two things we can do in phases three and four that are going to help you elevate yourself. Please let me know in the comments what you've been doing to improve yourself over the last year, years, or what you're going to be doing to improve yourself. Share with us and let me know what you are thinking and what you are doing. Before I wrap up the video, I will also let you know that I have left a link in both the description and the comments to my health guide, Pause and Prepare, that is specifically targeted to women over 40 who are entering the perimenopause and menopause stage of their lives. This guide lets you know or defines for you and explains to you what perimenopause and menopause are from my perspective as a healthcare provider, as a pharmacist. This guide is made with love and with my both Again, my expertise and my experience. I hope that you have found that the guide to be beneficial for you and let me know what else you're interested in. Make sure you grab that health guide and sign up for my newsletter at the same time so you don't miss any of these freebies that I'm going to be providing to you. Thank you again for tuning in and see you in the next video for phases three, four, and then followed up by phases five and six on how you can elevate yourself. Take care, see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.